Um, this is the stand-up meeting for FPGA team at Open Research Institute for the 8th of February, 2022. Exciting. Um, so what we do is we talk about what we have done over the past week, what we're going to be doing over the next week, what resources we need and what roadblocks we have. And a couple of people can't be here. Uh, Alan Scholl has a party going on, which sounds amazing, but I do have a report from him that I can read into the record. Um, but let's go ahead and start with you, Paul. I think there's some stuff going on with Remote Lab that's worth talking about. Unmuting my mic and then searching my mind here to figure out <laughs> what progress you're considering. Um, I call it progress. It might be challenges. It looks like that search was our file search and stuff like that was really slow on uh, Chaco Cat. Yeah, Chaco Cat is slow because it's still running on the main array. Um, we have uh, shuffled the storage down to a small enough amount that we can move to the, the SSD cache drive. We have not done that yet, which is why Chaco Cat is still running a little slow. Um, All right. We'll have okay. to find a time window for that, which will probably be after our return from Hamcash. Okay, so yeah, it sounds like it's in line with expectations. And uh, yeah, well, we have a lot of other things going on in the lab, mainly support of the integration of the um, of the encoder into the um, reference design from from analog devices. Uh, but yeah, I think that probably we'll stop working on that while we're at Hamcation until from the 9th through the 14th. Inclusive, we'll we'll be on travel. Um, so Anshul reports that, that he's been making progress on the firmware side of things to get the, uh, the programming side, so the processor side of what, what we're doing. There's a processor side, and then there's a programmable logic side with the Zinc processor from Xilinx. So for those that are not familiar with this, it's, um, um, but it's a FPGA from Xilinx that has a processor that's actually embedded within the programmable logic. So. Uh, part of the challenge is to get things balanced and working and communicating back and forth between the processor and the uh, program, traditional programmable logic of the, the FPGA. So, so he's working very hard to get the, uh, the processor side to configure and to load the, what we've designated as the bitstream for the programmable logic side. So he's studying things called FPGA resources and FPGA managers. This is all kernel, Linux kernel stuff and configuring the Linux kernel. Um, this means addressing the, the Kuiper build from, from analog devices, that Linux kernel and, and configuring it properly. And he's going to do a talk on this at our next technical meeting and explain how the, the processor um, can load the uh, programmable logic side and other related details. And this is something that I think we need to figure out and do really well and communicate to others uh, in order to be able to incorporate more of the, um, of the work that we're doing that is uh, VHDL and Verilog. And then on Codec 2, Anshul has started uh, conversations with uh, uh, Wojciech from M17. And he shared some initial documents and he needs to, Anshul needs to go through it and he'll set up a meeting to discuss the way forward. Um, Anshul is also involved in a variety of other things, uh, and I'm really looking forward to working with him there on debris mitigation, uh, things like that. Cool. Okay. Yeah, Ed, what do you got? Oh, nothing. I just figured I'd jump in and say hello while I'm packing. <laughs> Very good. You're ahead of me. <laughs> I, saw the, uh, I saw the link pop up on Slack, so I figured I'd jump in here. Oh, thank you. No, it's good to see you. Yeah, this... Uh, yeah, this is focused on like remote labs and the FPGA stuff. And I have to mention um, that we are looking, we have a code base of, of FPGA work uh, from M17. And that's uh, something that we've started to move forward with and, and try to get working. So exciting stuff. All right, great. All right, I'm going to go back to the side and I'll see All you right. guys soon. Yeah, very good. But, yeah, looking forward but... to it. All right, that's the highlights. I think that we can declare victory. We've got some oh, we've got some other things going on in remote labs with respect to MATLAB uh, and, and working out a workflow that goes from MATLAB all the way through to HDL. Uh, I'm excited about that. And what I'm gonna try to do is uh, do a, 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 an install of this MATLAB um, code base that will give us access to things like HDL coder. And I'm gonna try to do that on Karapi, I think, before we leave. 
for uh, Hamcation so that maybe we can um, test it out over the next week and and show people and ask for opinions on uh, ask for opinions on is, is this working for you um, and also maybe do some some recruiting for for people that might want to work uh, in a MATLAB or Octave environment and to have that go all the way through to hardware I think that would be exciting for a lot of people that are more accustomed to to writing software than than maybe working with uh, hardware or or ASICs we'll meet back up on Tuesday and hopefully have a lot to talk about from all the people that we're going to talk with at Hamcation. So the power of the in-person event and all that.